this is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, family, and fantasy film called Maleficent. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Long ago, the human kingdom is ruled by a greedy king who envies its neighboring kingdom, the Moors. In this majestic land dwells a fairy named Maleficent. After healing the majestic tree's branch, Maleficent flies over the moor's beautiful landscape, where the creatures greet her affectionately. When she notices the agitated fairies, Knotgrass, Thistlewit, and Flittle, she lands and finds out about a human thief at the Pool of Jewels. Maleficent worries and immediately takes flight. Maleficent arrives at the Pool of Jewels and meets the human thief, Stefan. After introducing herself, Maleficent orders him to return the stolen jewel, which he begrudgingly hands. Later, Maleficent walks him to the border, overlooking the human's kingdom, where Stefan hopes to live someday. When Maleficent discovers that Stefan is an orphan like her, she feels an affinity toward the boy. To establish their friendship, they shake hands, but Maleficent pulls away when his iron ring burns her. When she explains that iron burns fairies, Stefan apologizes and throws away his ring. The act touches Maleficent, because he, who has little, discards his possessions to appease her, thus starting the unlikely friendship between man and fairy. As they spend their time together, their friendship soon turns romantic. On Maleficent's 16th birthday, Stefan gifts her with what he claims is a true love's kiss. Years later, their relationship wanes when Stefan's visit becomes infrequent as he works towards his ambition in the human kingdom. Though she's now the Moor's protector, Maleficent is also lonely. One day, while perched by the cliff, Maleficent sees a battalion approaching the Moors, so she immediately takes flight. At the border, King Henry leads the battalion and orders the Moors' destruction. Maleficent arrives and warns them from entering, but Henry adamantly orders her death. Maleficent summons the Moors' creatures, creating an army of her own. She flies ahead and tackles several soldiers, and soon the two races battle. After fighting some soldiers, Maleficent flies towards the king and knocks him off his horse, mortally wounding him. The soldiers attempt to defend their regent, but Maleficent flaps her wings and knocks them down. When she lands to confront him, the king pushes her with his armored hands, leaving a burnt imprint on her collarbone. Soon, the soldiers retreat with their defeated king. That night, as he lies on his deathbed, King Henry orders vengeance against Maleficent, and whoever succeeds in killing her will take the throne alongside his daughter. Stefan, who is one of Henry's knights, becomes contemplative. Later, Stefan washes his face and stares at the mirror decisively. At dawn, Stefan seeks Maleficent and warns her of Henry's order for her death. Despite her animosity at his neglect, Maleficent heeds his warning. Later, as they cuddle in the meadow, Stefan gives Maleficent a spiked drink to put her to sleep. However, Stefan can't bring himself to stab her. Then, he caresses her wings and snaps a chain. In the morning, Maleficent wails when she realizes her wings were amputated. At the palace, Stefan presents the wings to Henry, who commands his success at slaying Maleficent. Meanwhile, Maleficent turns a twig into a staff and wobbles towards an abandoned castle to brood. The next day, Maleficent witnesses a crow getting trapped by a peasant. She weaves the crow into a man, making the terrified peasant flee. Maleficent approaches the morphed man who calls himself Devil. When he swears his allegiance, Maleficent declares he'll be her spy. Before long, Stefan gets crowned king. When Devil reports the coronation, Maleficent realizes that he took her wings so he could be king. Enraged, Maleficent shoots green fire into the sky, which Stefan witnesses from his palace. That same day, Maleficent turns the Moors into a blackened abode and creates a sinister throne, making the creatures bow at her in forced reverence. After some time, the palace rejoices at the birth of Stefan's daughter, Princess Aurora. The news of Aurora's grand christening celebration seems to delight Maleficent as she smiles treacherously. Many attend Aurora's christening day, including the Moors' three good fairies who come to bestow their gift to the princess. Stefan mistrusts their motive, but the queen entreats, so he eventually concedes. Knotgrass bestows beauty to Aurora while Flittle gifts her with joy. Before Thistlewit can utter her gift, strong winds gush and Maleficent saunters in. Dressed in a black cape, Maleficent approaches the throne and complains about not receiving an invitation. When Stefan bluntly declares she's unwelcomed, Maleficent only laughs and declares she's come to bear a gift to Aurora, engulfing Stefan in dread. When she approaches Aurora's cradle, Maleficent flicks the three fairies into a chest. As her power emanates green fire, Maleficent bestows Aurora with grace and beauty. The queen is relieved, but Stefan begs Maleficent to stop, knowing whatever she utters is revenge for his sin. Maleficent glances at a spinning wheel's spindle and curses Aurora. Before the sun sets on Aurora's 16th birthday, she'll prick her finger on the spindle and fall into a deep sleep. When Stefan kneels to beg, Maleficent is delighted, but she amends her curse instead of retracting it. Maleficent declares that Aurora will only be awakened by true love's kiss, mocking Stefan with his gift to Maleficent when she was 16. After establishing that the curse is irreversible, Maleficent leaves. Afterward, King Stefan orders the destruction of all spinning wheels in the kingdom, and the wreckage is buried in the castle's dungeon. Secretly, he entrusts Aurora's safekeeping to the three good fairies. 
Stefan orders his soldiers to hunt Maleficent, but Maleficent creates an impenetrable wall of thorns, forever keeping the Moors from the invasion of humans. Before long, the three fairies arrive in a cottage deep in the woods where they'll be raising Aurora. To blend in, they transform themselves into humans. When Notgrass declares flying is restricted, the three fairies bicker and get distracted, unaware that Devil has followed them. Later, Devil guides Maleficent to the cottage, where she peeks at Aurora. Maleficent attempts to terrify Aurora, but she bestows Maleficent an innocent smile. The next day, Aurora wails as the fumbling fairies show ignorance about properly feeding a baby, exasperating Devil and infuriating Maleficent with the noise. That night, Devil sneaks inside the cottage, feeding Aurora with flower nectar and rocking her to sleep. In the morning, the three fairies play a board game when they get rained on, unaware that Maleficent is amusing herself as she pranks them. Over the following days, Stefan succumbs to paranoia and obsesses about Maleficent's death. One night, his soldiers burn the moor's wall. However, with Maleficent's power, the wood comes to life and assaults the fleeing soldiers. Afterward, Stefan is enraged at his soldier's failure and stamps his dagger into the table. Suddenly, he lifts his dagger and orders to bring in the iron workers as he remembers Maleficent's weakness. Years later, Maleficent is perched in a tree overlooking a cliff where the tree fairies and Aurora have a picnic nearby. Maleficent amuses herself by playing pranks on the three fairies. As they grapple, they don't notice the five-year-old Aurora walking toward the cliff's edge while following a butterfly. Maleficent notices and seems unconcerned, but she eventually manipulates the vines to set Aurora back to safety. Later, Aurora wanders into the woods and encounters Maleficent. Maleficent tries dismissing her callously, but little Aurora gives her the innocent and pure affection of a child, effectively thawing the ice on Maleficent's heart. Over the years, Aurora grows with grace and beauty, just as Maleficent said. At 15 years old, Aurora wanders into the snow toward the Moor's Wall of Thorns while Maleficent and Devil watch her. Two soldiers posted at the Moor's border notices Aurora's cloaked figure and mistake her for Maleficent. Maleficent orders Devil to bring Aurora to her and turns him into a wolf. Just as the soldiers dismiss Aurora as a peasant, they hear her threatening growls. Maleficent approaches and makes Aurora float in slumber. When Devil appears and charges, the soldiers flee. However, Maleficent stands ahead, thus preventing their escape. Maleficent levitates the soldiers and makes them collide with each other. In one blast of power, she flings them to the trees and knocks them out. Afterward, Maleficent touches a steel helmet and gasps when her hands burn. When Devil returns, she turns him back into a human. Offended at being turned into a wolf that preys on birds, Devil grumbles until Maleficent turns him back into a crow to shut him up. Then, she guides Aurora out of the thorny walls and lays her in a meadow. She then hides behind a tree and brings Aurora out of slumber. Aurora instantly marvels at the majestic land she wakes up to, wonderstruck at the little light fairy surrounding her. Suddenly, the fairies scamper away in fear. Aurora faces the shadow where Maleficent hides and implores her to come out, apparently aware of Maleficent's presence. Instead of being afraid as Maleficent expected, Aurora smiles and claims her as her fairy godmother, who had watched over her since childhood. When Devil arrives, Aurora coos at the familiar bird. Maleficent turns Devil into a human and introduces him to Aurora. The encounter is surreal, but that doesn't diminish Aurora's delight. In her giddiness, Aurora approaches Maleficent, but the latter flinches and brings her back into slumber. Maleficent guides the afloat Aurora home while the Moorish creatures marvel at Aurora. Soon, Maleficent lays Aurora on her bed and bids her goodnight. Meanwhile, Stefan sits inside a room in his castle, staring and talking at Maleficent's wings which are stored in a showcase. Lost in his delusions, he refuses to see the queen on her deathbed. After their faithful encounter, Maleficent and Aurora soon spend time together in the meadow. While Aurora wonders at the majestic surroundings, Maleficent contents herself with watching Aurora. One night, the Moors' creatures engage Aurora in a mud fight. The creatures get afraid when mud splats Maleficent accidentally. Instead, she splatters the laughing devil with mud, thus entertaining Aurora and the creatures. That night, while Aurora sleeps, Maleficent tries to lift her curse, but she fails. She made her curse so strong that not even her power could revoke it. The following day, Aurora wonders about Maleficent's winglessness. Maleficent initially opposes talking about her wings, but she succumbs to Aurora's curiosity. With great fondness, Maleficent describes her strong and majestic wings. Sensing her grief, Aurora holds Maleficent, but the latter walks away. Meanwhile, Stefan wakes with the sudden clarity that Maleficent is coming. He heads out and demands to get the iron workers on their posts. The following day, Maleficent tries to confess about the curse, but Aurora suddenly declares that she wants to live with her in the moors. Relieved that Aurora will be safe in the moors from any spinning wheel, Maleficent encourages Aurora's decision. Before leaving, Aurora declares she'll tell her guardians about it. In a meadow, Prince Philip dismounts and overhears Aurora rehearsing what she'll tell her guardians about her decision to live in the moors. Philip excuses his intrusion and asks for directions to King Stefan's castle. Wary, Aurora backs away from the stranger and stumbles. When Philip rushes to her aid, the two feel an instant attraction. Then, Aurora points him in the castle's direction. 
After introducing themselves to each other, Philip thanks her and leaves. Aurora follows and Philip promises to return. From afar, Maleficent and Devil witness the interaction. When Maleficent turns him into his human form, Devil declares that Philip will give Aurora the true love's kiss, which will break Maleficent's curse. Maleficent laughs because she believes true love doesn't exist, so the curse is unbreakable. However, Devil argues and rationalizes that Philip might be Aurora's only chance. In their cottage, Thistlewit is ecstatic that they'll be leaving tomorrow on Aurora's 16th birthday. However, Notgrass argues that Stefan orders them to return Aurora the day after her birthday, thus ensuing another childish bickering. Shortly after, Aurora arrives and declares she'll be leaving home. Enraged, Notgrass goes into a tirade and accidentally mentions Aurora's father, making Aurora confused as they told her that she's an orphan. Since the moment of truth is inevitable, Flittle urges her to send. Afterward, a visibly upset Aurora confronts Maleficent about her curse. Aurora soon realizes that her fairy godmother is the evil fairy who cursed her. Remorseful, Maleficent tries to touch Aurora, but Aurora is repulsed and calls her evil before leaving. After Aurora's angry departure, Maleficent orders Devil to find Philip. Later, Aurora leaves home and rides a horse towards Stefan's castle. When she arrives, Stefan strategizes with his knights for their war against Maleficent. Instead of a heartfelt welcome Aurora expected, Stefan grumbles about the fairies returning her a day earlier. After ordering to lock her up, Stefan returns to his knights and orders them to prepare the net because Maleficent is coming. Back to their form, the three fairies hurry to search for Aurora. In her room, Aurora hisses as her forefinger tingles. Suddenly, Aurora gets drawn toward a wall, where she finds a door beneath the drape. When a handmaiden opens the door, Aurora dashes out. Just then, Philip returns to the meadow as he promised Aurora. However, he encounters Maleficent, who immediately glamours him to slumber. Maleficent turns Devil into a horse and rides towards the castle while Philip is draped on his horse. Just as Aurora's forefinger shows green streaks, Aurora's irises turn green, and she walks in a trance. She heads to the dungeon and finds the discarded remains of the kingdom's spinning wheels. Meanwhile, Maleficent returns in full gallop while the sun is quickly setting. Soon, the curse's power weaves a spinning wheel in the middle of the dungeon. As Maleficent reaches the castle, Aurora pricks her finger on the spindle before sunset. Aurora collapses while Maleficent realizes that the curse has taken effect. Shortly after, a handmaiden finds Aurora and kneels in grief. Despite knowing she's walking into a trap, Maleficent heads toward the castle. When the three fairies enter Aurora's room, Stefan condemns their failure to protect Aurora. Notgrass argues that Aurora's just sleeping, but Stefan rages because Aurora will be sleeping forever since true love doesn't exist. The castle's entrance is barricaded with iron, but Maleficent is not deterred. She crosses the barricade while Devil closely follows, guiding the afloat Philip. When they reach the passageway outside Aurora's room, she uses the afloat Philip to distract the guards and knocks him down. Maleficent releases her glamour and drops Philip outside the door, alerting the three fairies inside. When they realize he's a prince, they drag Philip toward Aurora's bed. It becomes evident that Philip is attracted to Aurora's beauty, so Flittle encourages him to kiss her. Just then, Maleficent and Devil sneak into the room. Eventually, Philip kisses Aurora, but she remains asleep. Disappointed, the three fairies leave to look for another way to wake Aurora and drag Philip out of the room. After the doors close, Maleficent reiterates that true love doesn't exist. Maleficent approaches Aurora and weeps as she regrets causing Aurora's suffering because of her hatred. Maleficent vows to protect Aurora while she sleeps. After saying she'll miss Aurora's smile, Maleficent kisses Aurora's forehead and turns to leave. Suddenly, Aurora wakes up and greets her with a smile of forgiveness and love. Devil looks on, witnessing the presence of true love. Meanwhile, Stefan is informed of Maleficent's presence. When Maleficent and Aurora step down the stairs later, Aurora affirms that she wants to return to the moors. To ensure it's safe to pass across the abandoned hall, Maleficent walks ahead. Just as Maleficent beckons Aurora, an iron net drops onto her. Soon, the soldiers appear and hit Maleficent with their spears while others restrain Aurora. When Maleficent turns Devil into a dragon, he breathes fire against the soldiers and frees Maleficent. Devil's attacks creates a barrage of falling debris, so Aurora flees upstairs and enters the room. While the others chain Devil, some soldiers surround the weakened Maleficent with iron shields. Just then, Aurora finds Maleficent's caged wings. Soon, a heavily armored Stefan walks inside the barricade and whips Maleficent. Aurora appends the showcase, setting the wings free. Stefan mocks Maleficent's winglessness and hurls her using his chain. Just as Stefan barrels for his kill, Maleficent's wings reattach, and Maleficent rises in her winged glory. The soldiers strike, but she evades and detaches a burning chandelier off the ceiling. As it drops near Devil, the soldiers lose hold of Devil's restraints. Stefan tethers her leg with the chain, but Maleficent flies out, dragging Stefan with her. She drops him atop the tower and frees herself from the chains. She chokes him, but she stops, unable to kill him. She turns to leave, but Stefan tackles her and they plummet off the tower. When Maleficent spreads her wings, Stefan loses grip and falls to his death. Maleficent lands beside his body and bows her head remorsefully. The following day, Maleficent abolishes the Wall of Thorns and restores the Moors to its former glory. 
With the human kingdom and the Moors unified, Maleficent crowns Aurora as queen. As the creatures rejoice, Maleficent and Devil soar to the sky. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.